So let's start. This is the home page of our new vividaquariums.com website. And here, you'll click saltwater fish. You'll see you can use this drop-down menu to go to any specific family of fish you like. Or, if you just click the saltwater fish link, it will take you to our saltwater fish page. And here, we're going to start with angels. Dwarf angels, we have a lot of good choices. A uh, couple favorites that I think are good for beginners would be the Coral Be Beauty Angel. You can click here to go straight back to other dwarf angels. Also, the Flame Angel is a good choice. Now, I must note, if you're going to add multiple uh, angels at the same time, or multiples of any fish with similar shape or same family, that's ideal to add them together as a group, and that'll definitely reduce any territorial disputes. So now we've seen the angels, we looked at the coral beauty, the flame, the bicolor, those are good choices for beginners. Uh, maybe even an African flame bat could be another good choice. Let's go back to saltwater fish and look. Anglers is the next category, we're going to skip that because anglers don't make great beginner fish. Now antheas, uh, most antheas require a tank that should be established at least six to eight months. But you could add a disbar antheas to a tank that's well established and they do best in schools. Ideally uh, three to five fish per school. We're going to go back, just click our saltwater fish link this time. And then we'll go to basslets. Now there's lots of good basslets for beginners. In fact, all these are generally pretty good for beginners. But one of my all-time favorites is a Royal Grama. It's a beautiful fish, uh, very uh, cost-effective addition to your tank, can bring a lot of color. You notice if you click the more button here, that'll give you the full text of the description. And I actually did write all these descriptions myself. It's been a long uh, couple of months redoing them all, but I wanted to provide the best up-to-date information I could for my customers. Another couple great choices we have are chalk bass. That's a great option. Tobacco bass. Black cap basslets are definitely also good for beginners. Uh, the swales and Swiss guard, I would say, leave to more established tanks, but uh, definitely basslets in general are a great choice uh, for most reef tanks and for beginner tanks. Now we click back on saltwater fish. Our next category is blennies. Every tank needs at least a blenny or two. Uh, many great choices here. You can go with the bicolor blenny or the flame tail blenny. Now here's a good option. If you look at the starry blenny and the lawnmower blenny, you'll notice very similar shape. They look almost identical in shape. So if you wanted to add these two fish to the website, I'm sorry, to your aquarium, uh, you'd want to add them certainly together. But I actually recommend just one of these per tank, unless it's a very large aquarium, over a couple hundred gallons. Now the tail spot blenny is another great choice for beginners, especially for smaller tanks. This fish doesn't grow very large and it makes a great algae cleaner for nano cubes. Uh, very peaceful fish as well. Also, a Midas Blenny is a very colorful choice. It doesn't do much in the way of eating algae, but it does look gorgeous as it swims all over the aquarium. And you notice here, we also have a link where you can click to view a video. More and more of our fish are going to have videos in addition to a still photo to give you a better idea of exactly how that fish will look in your tank. Now, for Blennies, the red spotted Blenny, I would say to avoid for beginners, this particular Blenny is pretty hard to maintain and definitely less. Uh, best left to experts and uh, people with established aquariums. Next category is butterfly fish. And we're going to look at butterflies here. A spot banded butterfly is not a bad choice for beginners, but butterflies do eat corals, so honestly, I don't really recommend them. I'd say let's cruise on to the next category and look at cardinals. Cardinals make a great choice for any saltwater tank. You can add them in schools and groups and uh, the Bengai Cardinal, for instance, is a mouth uh, rotor, and it will hold the young in its mouth, which is kind of neat to watch. Uh, these fish will breed in the home aquarium, and uh, definitely a great choice uh, for your home tank. We go back to Cardinals. The spotted and orange line Cardinals, also great choices. Uh, so all those are great beginner fish. Now, probably one of everybody's favorite categories is clownfish. And the Ocellaris clown, the percula clown and the black and white ocellaris are all very good choices. Uh, those do well and the great beginner's fish. Also the orange skunk or the pink skunk clown are great choices. I would say that the tomato, the clarky, the maroon and gold maroon, these are much more aggressive species of clownfish 
and slightly harder to maintain. So as a beginner, I'd recommend sticking with the Ocellaires, the Percula, and the black and white, or the Skunk Clowns. But really, how can you go wrong with such a beautiful fish as that Percula right there? We'll go back and look at our next category of fish, which is damsels. Now, in days past, uh, many hobbyists were told to cycle aquariums with damsels. Problem is, the damsels become very territorial, and they'll often chase and harass fish many times their own size. So adding them as the first fish to a tank is not a good choice, and we definitely don't recommend it. In fact, you can cycle your aquarium simply with uh, live rock and uh, add the fish uh, that you like once the aquarium is cycled. One exception to this category is the blue-green chromis. These are great, very peaceful schooling fish that do well in any reef aquarium, most aquariums in, in general, uh, and definitely a very good choice. Now we go back to saltwater fish. We'll look at our dart fish. Dart fish are pretty much all great beginner fish. My top picks would be the firefish goby or the purple firefish goby mainly because they have great coloration, they're easy to keep. Just be mindful to keep the tank covered as these fish can jump from an open tank. And I would say on dart fish, the Helfreaky firefish, although it's a beautifully stunning fish, is a little bit trickier than the other dart fish, so I'd leave that uh, until your tank is more established. Let's go back and look at our next category, which is fox face. Fox face are great herbivores. They'll help to keep the tank clean and free of nuisance algae. Uh, the one spot fox face is a great choice. Uh, something a little more unique would be the magnificent rabbit fish. Also a great choice for beginner tanks. But in general, you can't go wrong with any of the fox face species. They're all good beginner fish. We'll click to our next category now and look at gobies. Gobies. Most gobies are great beginner fish. Uh, yellow watchman is a great choice. That'll pair with a pistol shrimp. The orange spotted goby is also a great choice. Now the mandarins, the psychedelic mandarin and the green mandarin, those need to be uh, only added to established aquariums because they feed strictly on copepods. So they should be added to a tank that's at least six to nine months old with plenty of copepods for them to eat. Now another good choice would be an orange spot diamond goby. These are great sand cleaners. Uh, they'll do a good job of keeping your sand bed sifted and well cleaned, so definitely a great choice to a tank. Again, just make sure to have the tank well covered because they can jump from an open tank. Um, Randall's goby is a very good choice. You'll see it here in the picture paired with a pistol shrimp. Another option you can click is enlarge your photo, which will give you a larger pop-up of the, of the fish, which is a nice feature. We have all the information there. Going back to gobies. Another good choice would be the pearly jawfish, the yasha goby, even the yasha goby paired with the shrimp or the high fin red banded goby, all good choices. Blue spotted jawfish is a little bit trickier and definitely when you have a $120 fish, it's a good jumper, probably best left to someone with a more established tank. So I'd hold off on that guy uh, until you have a little more experience. Now we'll go to the next category, which will be hawkfish using our drop down menu. Falco's hawk, we have an archive hawk, Longnose and flame hawk. <clears throat> the longnose hawk is actually a very peaceful hawkfish, probably one of the more peaceful hawkfish out there. So I would recommend that or the flame hawk for beginners, because they are less aggressive uh, and they can be kept in reef tanks. The only real threat they would pose is to very small uh, shrimp or inverts, but uh, usually not a problem with hawkfish. Now hogfish, that's a different story. Hogfish such as the Diana's hog, the coral hog, and the Spanish hog are much more aggressive and they will go after a lot of small inverts and shrimp. However, the yellow candy hog is a great choice for beginners and will do well in most reef aquariums. It's very peaceful and shouldn't bother any uh, inverts in the tank whatsoever. And we go back to our next category, which is lionfish. Lionfish uh, can be kept by beginners. They are relatively easy to keep, but they will eat anything that fits in their mouth. And obviously as they grow, their mouth grows with them. So I'd recommend starting with a very small lionfish if you do want to add one. And just keep in mind, if it'll fit in its mouth in one bite, it will end up being lunch at some point. Our next category, nano fish. Here we go through and we list all different fish that are smaller and fish that do well in smaller aquariums. 
So this is a great choice for those of you with nanos, just to view, uh, get ideas for what, what would do well in a smaller tank. Next category is Pseudochromus. Pseudochromus are all great beginner fish. Uh, probably one of my favorites would be either the Diadem Pseudochromus or the Friedmani Pseudochromus. But all of them are hardy fish and uh, all of them will be good choices for a beginner tank. Now tangs is our next category. In tangs we have a lot of beautiful fish here. For beginners I'd recommend maybe a sailfin tang or a yellow tang. Uh, also the Desjardini sailfin, the Mimic lemon peel, or maybe a purple tang. Purple tangs are obviously absolutely beautiful. Now if we go back to our tangs page, I would definitely wait on the Chevron Tang and the Soho. The Soho is more aggressive. The Chevron, although it's not an aggressive Tang, is trickier to keep and definitely not a great choice for a beginner. Uh, also, one I forgot to mention is the Yellow Eye Tang. This is a great choice for beginners and a superb algae eater. They'll really do a great job of keeping your tank clean. Now, in Tangs, we can illustrate, if we look at the Yellow Tang, the shape of its body, and we look over here at the Scopus Tang in the shape of his body, and we look down at the Purple Tang, You'll notice these three fish are shaped almost exactly the same, although they have different colorations. Now, if you want to add these three fish at the same time, you definitely want to, or I'm sorry, you definitely want to add them at the same time to avoid territorial disputes. Because any fish, certainly of the same family, and then when you, ha when you add in the combined uh, same body shape, you have a lot higher risk of these fish fighting if they're added separately. So when you want to add fish of similar size, shape, or color, add them as groups and you'll reduce any territorial disputes. Let's go to our next category which is trigger fish. Stunning fish here. The best choices for a beginner uh, if you're doing a reef tank and you want to take the risk of adding a trigger you can add a blue jaw trigger or a niger trigger. These usually are pretty safe unless you have very small inverts. Now we have uh, one of my favorite triggers, the clown trigger. It's a great fish, uh, absolutely stunning. but. Uh, very risky in a reef tank. They'll eat clams, they'll eat shrimp, they'll eat smaller fish. But uh, we do have a video here of one that I've maintained in a reef tank for six months now. And one thing they don't eat is coral. So while it's a much riskier option, it is an option. And uh, triggers are very hardy fish, so definitely good choice for beginners. Now we'll start with one of our very favorite categories, or my favorite categories, which is wrasse. You know, it's just a beautiful range of coloration in the wrasses. Uh, six line wrasse is a very good choice for beginners. Also uh, you can look at the tricolor fairy wrasse, another great choice for beginners. Very easy to keep, very peaceful fish. The banana wrasse, the dragon, and the lunar wrasse are more aggressive predatory wrasses. So I would wait on those unless it's a predator tank. They are easy to keep. If you're doing a reef tank, consider maybe the pink margin. Certainly the McCoskers, uh, again, just a stunningly beautiful fish. And similar to the McCoskers will be the Carpenter's Wrasse, the Line Spot Flasher. All three of these are very good choices for beginners. Also the Solar Fairy Wrasse and the Exquisite Wrasse. Yellowtail Tamarin is a bit harder to keep, so I'd wait on that as a beginner until you have a more established tank. The Four Line Wrasse is definitely a great beginner choice, as well as the Red Velvet Wrasse. And the Misty Wrasse, I gotta say, one of my all-time favorite fish out there. Beautiful, good reef safe wrasse, and uh, they'll provide a lot of color as they swim all throughout the rock park. Now you'll notice a Hawaiian flame wrasse and Scott's fairy wrasse, beautifully stunning fish, but definitely trickier to keep, so I'd wait on those uh, and don't add them to a beginner tank. And definitely with all wrasses, make sure that the aquarium is well covered, because any wrasse is a potential jumper. Uh, that's it for all of our fish. Hope this is helpful and hope uh, you can use this video to make good educated decisions. But certainly remember we're here to help you. So if you do have any questions about what fish to buy, just give us a call at 1-800-993-0979. We're here to help. Thank you guys.